Congress, I like to introduce Congressman Lloyd Doggett. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you all very much. Great to be with you today. That was really inspiring, Lupe. Thank you. Thank you all so very much. I am here as usual with my partner through all of these endeavors, Libby, who's done so much in her own right. Libby's been an advocate for our youngest uh, children all over the country. And last January, as she was completing her work with President Obama, she stayed there in Washington for that great women's march. Uh, I came uh, home to be with Donna Howard and many of you at the great women's march we had here, which seemed like a lot more fun than uh, a Trump inauguration. Uh, <laughs> took, our, took our little uh, second grade granddaughter to make her first protest sign and her mom, and we did the march and it was very inspiring. And you know, I know many of you are, are part of that. And since that time, we've had so many marches and rallies about the Trump immigration policy, uh, Joseph about his war on science, uh, about climate change, about uh, LGBTQ rights, about the separation of these families. We've had tweet storms, we've had social me media activity. Uh, we have been angry one morning after another when we saw the latest news that had come out. And the real question through all of this has been, will we see those protests and that interest, will it get focused and make any difference in the election? And I'm so pleased that your title is about action because now it really comes down to was all that unhappiness that we continue to see, was all that energy that we felt out there, can it really be reflected in the election? Uh, and we do this and we have a unity rally at a time when we've seldom had less unity in this country. We have a president who thrives on disunity, on abusing, even people in his own party, uh, who wants to drive us apart and who's aligned himself with, uh, well, the only person he never criticizes, Vladimir. Uh, and we know the Russians, when they were involved in the recent election, one of the main things they were doing was disunity. There was a rally uh, down in Houston that was supposed to be uh, stirred up by one group of Russian bots that was pro-Muslim. And then they got an anti-Muslim group to come to the same spot at the same time. We know the stories, Mayor, about even during the, the tragedy of the Austin bombing. There apparently were some Russian efforts out there to turn that into a racial division. Uh, they're on one side stirring up pro-police people, on the other side uh, encouraging uh, the, the Black Lives Matter with st uh, stories even worse than what we've seen in fact out there for division. And we have to overcome that kind of division this year. And it goes right into the heart of our own political party. Uh, I once lost a, a race. It's not fun to get up and have to concede. But we have people today, we really had an embarrassment of riches here in Travis County during this recent election. We had a number of really fine people who ran. <laughs> Many of them may well have an opportunity to serve us in some other capacity, and it speaks so well of them today and, carry of your effort that you bring all of them together to say we're now about something bigger than any one person because so much is at stake. I have people almost every week uh, who complain about the fact that we're not getting anything done up there and that we haven't stopped Trump. In fact, I get a number of them that say, why haven't you gotten Trump out of office yet? Uh, and you know, there really is only one reason, uh, and it's called arithmetic. Uh, and when it, whether it is gun safety, uh, whether it is climate change, whether it is women's health, whether it is uh, whether our children, our grandchildren can go to school safely with uh, the epidemic of gun violence that we've had across this country. Uh, it's just a matter of arithmetic. They have more people in the Congress. They have more people in the state legislature. They control all of our statewide offices. They have what they call unified Republican government there in Washington. And in fact, they're going to try and unify it with the judicial branch as well and overrule these lower court rulings that have been a little bit of a check. 
Uh, and what will make a difference, if we want to change any of those laws, the only way we're going to be able to do it is to change the lawmakers. And that's what today is all about. When I, when I see these Republicans uh, who are, are silent, or sometimes even separating, literally tearing babies out of the arms of their mothers, which is what has happened, and now they've got over 2,000 of them, they're not really sure where some of them are. I work with a 23-year-old Guatemalan who was separated for a little over a month from her five-year-old. Just so wrong, but Republicans, if they're not celebrating that, the Trump's got their tongue. They, they can't find anything to say. I call out, I get a call from KUT about some of these things like gun violence, and then we'll later ask, well, why didn't, why didn't the, the television station cover this? And they said, well, we couldn't get any of the Republicans to respond in Austin, the, the people that show up as cardboard cutouts at your town hall meetings, those kind of people. Well, if you want to change that, the only way we can do it is not by smiling more or hugging more or doing what they call bipartisan, which is totally caving in to everything they want to embrace Trump. It will be because we change the people. If, if, So if you believe in uh, what I've been trying to do, and it's true that most of you, I, I did find one person here who's actually in, still in the district that, that I serve going down to the south side of San Antonio. But if you believe in what I'm doing and that I'm voting for you, uh, even if you can't vote for me, the one thing that we need are reinforcements. And there's nothing you can do that will make a bigger difference in the life of our country and in the work I'm doing than to send Joseph Kopser and Julie Oliver up there to serve with me. I know, I know that Donna and Senator Watson feel the same way about our state legislative candidates. They, they really have a tougher job than I do. We got after all, we got Dan Patrick before we had Trump. And uh, the danger to our public schools and so many of these other issues, they need reinforcements. And we have the capacity to do it, not by working in somebody else's neighborhood across town, but by working in our neighborhood with our neighbors and getting them to participate and maybe convincing some people that thought voting Republican meant fiscal responsibility or family values are something than other than what Trump and all of his gang represent. And we can win them over and make a difference this year. And then finally, a word about these statewide candidates. The one race that I lost a very long time ago was the Democratic nominee for the United States Senate. Catherine Malsey remembers because she was working with me in that campaign as were some of you. I meet occasionally people who don't know we have a candidate for comptroller or for agriculture commissioner because it's hard to get the message out about that. And our reaching down and, and just uh, offering to, a little advice to them on a check that'll pay for another tank of gas might help them get that message out there. Uh, we need to be supporting with our time and with our checks every one of these candidates. It is a message that I think, uh, particularly Julie in, in your district, uh, which I'm casting my vote for Julie because we got cut five blocks out of uh, our own district. Uh, that, you know, you went out, as, as I know, our candidates for comptroller and land commissioner and ag commissioner and certainly our candidate for governor are doing to places that hadn't seen a Democrat for years as a candidate and worked in those small towns uh, to tell them that they had a, a vote that could really count too. Uh, and so I salute each of you who are running. I look forward to a partnership together. I believe that there has, in the entire time that since I began serving as a state senator here back in the 70s, I have never seen a more dangerous time for our country. Our democracy is under direct threat from someone who daily tells us that he admires every third word, world thug that he salutes and praises. Uh, we will see the steady ebbing of our democracy from in all three branches, enabled by those who couldn't find their tongue to speak up 
unless they denounce their retirement. And that's where we are. We can make a difference. We must make a difference because we love our country. We want it to be the great country we know that it really is, but it will take our participation and doing a little more work and giving a little more of our personal resources than we've ever done before. This is the year to do it. This great Blue Action Democrats is the way to get it accomplished. You're going to hear from these wonderful people, and I look forward to hearing and working with them and with you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.